Good morning, and welcome to Hawkinsville First United Methodist Church on this graduation Sunday. What an exciting day in the life of our church as we celebrate our graduates and we lift them up to God as they move forward in life. I'm so glad that all of you are here this morning. I want to welcome any guests that we have with us today. We're especially glad to have you here with us, and welcome to our online church as well. We're glad that you guys are tuning in. We have a few announcements that I want to go over in your bulletin. Uh, you'll see all the names of our graduates. We're going to be honoring them later on in the service, and we'll have a time for that. Also, the flowers on the altar this morning are given to the glory of God and in honor, and in honor of Emily Obert Thorne and for all of the 2021 graduates by Scott and Laurie Obert Thorne. Also, on the back, you'll notice there's going to be no uh, choir practice this week. They'll resume later on. And then next Sunday is going to be Pentecost Sunday. And on Pentecost, we like to wear the color red. Red is the symbolic color of Pentecost. So next Sunday, if you have anything red and you're going to be in church, we invite you to wear red as we celebrate the Holy Spirit together. And now I'm going to call on Mr. Milton Sutherland. He is the uh, chair of our finance committee, and he has a special announcement for us. Greetings. Isn't this a beautiful place? It's a beautiful building. This church was founded in 1825, so in four years it's our 200th anniversary. This sanctuary and building were erected in 1949. They are beautiful, they are historic, and they are old. The stained glass windows have no equal anywhere. I was married in this sanctuary. I love this building. This building must have a new roof. Our insurance company will not provide us coverage on the existing roof. We have to have insurance. The trustees have been working hard over the past several months, working with contractors, engineers, and roofing companies in order to find the best answer to our needs. A new roof will cost our church approximately $150,000. The trustees accepted an offer from a roofing company out of Warner Robins. The old asbestos shingles have, been, have to be removed before the new roof can be installed. The finance committee decided to borrow that money from planners first and set up a 10-year installment loan. This means we must pay $15,000 annually plus interest. Now it is up to us to pay for the roof. And there are several ways that you can help over the next 10 years. You can make a monthly pledge for the roof project. You can make an annual pledge for the roof project or make a lump sum gift for the roof project or any other way you would like to do it. We need your help. There are pledge cards in the back tables this morning. You can fill out today or take home and think about it. If you want to write a check today, simply indicate on your check roof project. Please pray about this undertaking. Talk with God. Please do what you can. Thank you. Our opening hymn this morning is found on page 370, if you care to use the hymnal, Victory in Jesus. And it, today is a victory when we look at these graduates, isn't it? Let's stand, please, and sing all three verses.
join me in this historic affirmation of the Christian faith found in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. take your seat, I invite you to turn to your neighbor and welcome everybody to church this morning. now going to call uh, Christy Vickers and Emily Goss are going to come and lead our graduation ceremony for our graduates. Good morning. All right, so we are going to honor our 2021 graduates, high school graduates. First, we're going to have Gracie Collins. Gracie Collins is the daughter of Will and Stephanie Collins, the granddaughter of Lynn and Tammy Neesmith, and Connie Sebney, the, and the late Ken Collins. Gracie will graduate from Hawkinsville High School. She was a member of the HHS Lady Softball Team for four years and named second team all-region her senior year. Gracie participated in the work-study program, working at the Statehouse. Gracie will attend Middle Georgia State University in the fall to study business. Next is Joseph Goss. Joseph is the son of Mitzi and Chad Gay and Joey and Chastity Goss and will graduate from Hawkinsville High School. He was a member of FFA for three years and served as vice president his senior year. He received an award for work-based learning and participated in two blood drives. Joseph worked with Harp Scouting Service where he scouted cotton, peanuts, soybeans, and watermelons. Joseph plans for the future indefinite at this time. Sloan Grinstead. Sloan is the daughter of Tom and Sandy Grinstead and will graduate with honors from Hawkinsville High School. Sloan was a member of the Beta Club, 4-H, FBLA, FCCLA, FCA, and Art Club. She participated in track, cross country, tennis, band auxiliary team, and cheerleading. Sloan was chosen for the Washington Youth Tour and was dual enrolled at Georgia Southern her senior year. Sloan will attend the University of Georgia in the fall to pursue a degree in nutritional science. Next is Tucker Johnson. Tucker is the son of Eric and Heather Johnson and will graduate from Hawkinsville High School. He played varsity football all four years. Tucker was an active member of the Hawkinsville FFA, where he served in several officer positions, including FFA president his senior year. In the fall, Tucker plans to attend Abraham Baldwin Agriculture College to pursue a degree in agribusiness. Next, May McLean. 
the daughter of Mike and Kim McLean, will graduate from Westfield, Westfield School as a high honor graduate with distinction. May was involved in chorus, all select state chorus, and an award-winning trio. May was a member of the varsity cheer, basketball, and soccer teams. She also served as a student council officer and participated in numerous school clubs and civic activities. May will attend the University of Georgia's honor program in the fall to pursue a degree in public health and has been selected as a charter scholar at the university. Next, Bailey McLeod. Bailey is the daughter of Paula McLeod and Jim McLeod and will graduate from Hawkinsville High School. Bailey was a member of the FFA and FCCLA and played varsity softball all four years. Bailey will attend Middle Georgia State University in the fall with plans to transfer to Georgia Southern. Next, Emily Oberthorn. Emily is the daughter of Scott and Laurie Oberthorn, granddaughter of Scott and Nancy Wall, great-granddaughter of Jean Wall. Emily will graduate with honors from Hawkinsville High School. Emily is the 2021 star student and member of Beta Club, FCCLA, a Governor's Honors nominee, a graduate of Pulaski Tamar Youth Leadership, and dual enrolled at Middle Georgia State University. Emily participated in varsity football competition cheerleading, track, cross country, and the MGSU equestrian team. Emily will attend the University of Georgia in the fall to pursue a degree in journalism communications. Gannon Prophet. Gannon is the son of Chris and Natalie Saltz and Ryan and Susan Prophet, and the grandson of John and Linda Holland. Gannon will graduate from Veterans High School. Gannon was involved, enrolled in the work study program his senior year and worked full time while maintaining his studies. Gannon will attend Valdosta State University in the fall to pursue a degree in psychology with plans to transfer to Florida State University. Evan Roberts. Evan is the son of John and Allison Roberts and will graduate with honors from Hawkinsville High School. Evan is a member of the Beta Club, a graduate of Pulaski Tamar Youth Leadership, participates in youth work-based learning and was dual enrolled in Middle Georgia State University. Evan played varsity baseball for two years and varsity golf for two years, including captain his senior year. Evan plans to apply for electri electrical apprenticeship in the fall. These are 2021 high school graduates. Before you guys sit down, I want to have a prayer and a blessing for y'all. Y'all have gotten some gifts from the church. You have a prayer shawl and a Bible that the church has donated to you guys. Uh, this Bible is a really cool study Bible. Uh, you can download an app on your phone, and you can get all kind of study notes on your phone, and it's a really cool Bible, and I know you guys will use it moving forward to learn the Word of God and to follow His commands. So if you'll bow your heads, we'll have a prayer and a blessing over our graduates today. Father, we are so thankful for all of our graduates this morning. Uh, you have brought them so far in their lives to get to this point, and this is a milestone. Uh, we lift them up to you, we praise you for their lives, and we ask your blessing on them moving forward in life. Lead them, guide them, guard them, and direct them. Give them your wisdom to make good decisions and good choices as they head into this next stage in life. Fill them with your Holy Spirit and give them boldness to live out their faith to stay true to you, and to live as disciples of Jesus Christ. Thank you for their families and that extended group of people that have helped them to get to this point. Thank you for bringing all these graduates this far, and we know that you have good, good things in store for them in the future. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Let's give another round of applause this morning. That is awesome. We are so proud of all of our graduates this morning. But now we're going to move into our time of the morning prayer, so I invite you to bow your heads and we will go to the Lord in prayer together. 
Heavenly Father, what a wonderful day it is to be here in this place to worship you. Uh, we celebrate who you are. We celebrate your goodness. We celebrate your magnificent plan of salvation brought about in Jesus Christ for us and for all the world. We're thankful that you came to us in Christ while we were still sinners to pour out your love, to transform our lives, and to lead us into the life of holiness. And we continue to pray for so many things this morning. We pray for all of our leaders in all levels of government. Uh, we pray for our men and women in the, in the military who are sacrificing so much for us every single day, and we pray for their families as well. We pray for our doctors and nurses and all of our hospital workers. We pray for our police, firefighters, first responders, and all who are working to make this community safer every single day. Uh, we also lift up our businesses to you. We pray for the economy. We pray for those in need. And we also pray for those who are sick and hurting and going through difficult times in life right now. We pray to you because we know that you are the God who hears. You are the God who acts. You are the God who comes near to us. And we believe in your power to bring about good out of bad situations. We believe in your power to heal and to comfort. We believe in your power to change lives. We believe in your power to bring about something new in the midst of the old world. Come and make us new this morning. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us anew, that we may be filled with your love, your power, and your holiness, that we may be your people on behalf of the world. Come, Holy Spirit, and make us like Christ. We make this prayer in Jesus' name. As we pray now together, that great prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are beginning a new sermon series today called Grace and Gratitude. We're going to be going through the book of Hebrews over the next few weeks. And the title of today's sermon is The Glory of Christ. The Glory of Christ. 
So as we begin, let me ask you a question. Have you ever had a teacher who made a big impact on your life? I could think back to many, many a teacher who, who meant a lot to me over the years. First of all, I think back to my eighth grade science teacher, Mr. Dan Taylor. Uh, Mr. Dan Taylor, he did something that was very difficult to do. He actually made learning fun, which is not easy to do at all. And, and we would talk about all the stuff that was going on in the world. We would learn life lessons, stuff that had nothing to do with science at all. And then he would take all of that stuff, bring it all together into what we were learning in class that day. And he was an awesome teacher. I think back to my chorus teacher in high school, Miss Weatherford. Uh, she was one of those teachers who really cared about you as a person. It wasn't just about the grades. It wasn't just about the right singing technique. She wanted us to become the best people that we could be in life. And she would befriend all of the students, the, the band kids or the athletes, the brainiacs, the, the uh, kids who didn't really fit in anywhere. She would love everybody. She was great. In college, I think back to a professor that I had, Dr. Stoltzfus. Uh, he was this guy who uh, was teaching one of the very first religion classes that I took that kind of got me on this whole track. And he would teach me how, how the faith is meant to be lived out in a real way in our lives. And that has stuck with me ever since. He was a fantastic teacher. So I'm sure that you all have the teachers in your own lives that made a difference to you. And so here's my question today. There have been a lot of special teachers throughout history. So, why do we worship Jesus? Why do we worship Jesus? Why is he so special above all the others? I mean, think about all the great thinkers and philosophers of history. There's a lot of great ones. Uh, the Hebrew world had Moses. The Greek world had Plato and Aristotle and Socrates. The Roman world had Marcus Aurelius. The Chinese world had Confucius. So, why in the world do we lift up Jesus above all of those others. Get this. It's because of who he is. It's because of who he is. I invite you to listen to God's word today. This comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 1. I'm going to read verses 3 and 4. It says, The Son, Jesus, radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. And he sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. When he had cleansed us from our sins, he sat down at the place of honor at the right hand of the majestic God in heaven. And this shows that the Son is far greater than the angels, just as the name God gave him is greater than their names. This is the word of God for we, the people of God, and we say together, thanks be to God. So Hebrews is this really interesting book in the New Testament. It's not really like a, a letter. It's more like a sermon. And it's not written to a specific group of people. It doesn't have a specific author who wrote it. But it's clear that it's written to Christians who were going through a difficult time. That, that this group was in danger of falling away from the faith and losing their grounding in Jesus Christ. So the sermon of Hebrews is meant to give them a reminder of who Jesus is and all that he did for them, and all that Jesus means for their lives. I mean, the preacher says some really interesting stuff about Jesus here. It says, it says that Jesus reflects and radiates the glory of God. That sounds like something that's pretty important to me. Uh, God's glory was the, the splendor and the power and the majesty of God. Uh, in the Old Testament, God himself was so powerful that he could not even be seen fully. But his glory is able to be seen at different points. And what Hebrews is saying here is that God's glory, God's light, God's radiance is now seen perfectly in Christ Jesus. Jesus is the embodiment of God's glory. Jesus shows us who God is in all of his fullness. So the preacher here is trying to remind the people that Jesus is not just some ordinary guy. He's not just another teacher that we can put on that list of great teachers no, he's, he's the glory of God himself. Next, the preacher says that Jesus, he, he bears the very character, the very nature of God. 
And the idea here goes back to the ancient world of, of stamping a document with like a, a ring uh, that had wax on it. You would put your ring in there and it would have the stamp on the document. Or when you're creating a coin, they would have this machine that would press the coin and then the markings would be on the coin exactly what it was supposed to look like. And what, what Hebrews is saying here is that Jesus is that exact imprint of God. He is the stamp of God himself. And that means that when we want to know what God looks like, we look where? We look at Jesus. Uh, Pastor Brian Zahn has a saying that he likes to, to use to drive this home. He says that God is like Jesus. God has always been like Jesus. And we haven't always known this, but now we do. So let me ask you, does this information change your picture of God today? Uh, maybe the image of God in your mind is of God sitting up there with his arms crossed, ready to throw a lightning bolt at us when we mess up in life. Uh, may, 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 maybe you picture God as the one who's trying to take all the fun out of your life. He's always mean. He's always angry. Maybe you picture God as the one who is distant, who doesn't care about us. He's not concerned about our lives. I invite you to look to Jesus. And when you see the love of Jesus... That's God. When you see the compassion of Jesus, that's God. When you see Jesus healing people and restoring life, that's God. When you see Jesus coming near and bringing salvation to the world, that's God. And when I see Jesus and all that he did for us, that's God's glory. That is God's character. That is God's nature. Jesus is God in the flesh. Scholar David De Silva is a professor at Ashland Theological Seminary, and he says that in their chapel, when you go up into the pulpit, uh, etched into the pulpit itself are these words, always give them Jesus. So the preacher sees that and, and remembers what it's all about. That's a great reminder to me as a preacher, but, but that's what the preacher of Hebrews is trying to do for the people. He's giving them, again, the foundation of Jesus. And there's no need to look anywhere else. There's no need to follow anyone else because Jesus is the supreme. Jesus is the only one worth devoting our lives to. Jesus is greater. And that's our bottom line for today. Jesus is greater than anyone or anything else that this world has to offer. If you guys don't hear anything else, I hope you hear that. Jesus is greater than anyone or anything else this world has to offer. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 says that in many ways, God used to speak to us by the prophets to our ancestors. And that means that we used to have other people who told us what God is like. But now we have God's glory in the flesh, in Jesus. Now we have God coming to us in Christ. And everything we want to know about God, we now see in Jesus. The preacher then reminds the people of Jesus' divine nature when it says that he upholds everything by his powerful word. Now, that's not something that anybody else can accomplish, is it? I cannot uphold or sustain anything by my powerful word, can I? That doesn't accomplish much. My powerful word does not amount to much at all. I saw a story this week. Did y'all see this story in the news where this tiger got loose? In a Houston neighborhood, like a, a live tiger was roaming around this suburb, and it was going in and out of driveways and, and walking around houses, all of that kind of stuff. It was this guy's pet, and the guy was out there trying to wrangle the tiger to get back into his truck, and he was giving him commands. And the tiger was not listening to the commands, if you can imagine that. He was saying, no, sir, no, sir, don't you come any closer. No, sir, slow down. And the tiger was not having it at all. Now, I'm not sure how the story ended. Hopefully, it ended pretty good. But, but his powerful word, it didn't amount to much when it came to that tiger. And I was thinking about that with us. Our powerful word is nothing, which makes sense because we're not God. We're not God in the flesh. We're not the divine son of God who reflects his glory. But Jesus is. Jesus is worthy of worship. Because he continues to, to uphold the universe by his powerful word. And that sounds like a very, a very kingly role, a very majestic role. Which is what Hebrews says. It says that when he, he had cleansed us from our sin, he took his place at the right side of God. That sounds like a king to me. 
Jesus is now at the right hand of the Father, sustaining the world, upholding the world by his powerful word. And that means that the world and all of us who are here today, we're not here by chance. We're not here as an accident. We're here, all of us, because of Christ. And we rest in his hands. So, what could be more powerful than, than how we respond to Jesus? What could be more important than the role that we give Jesus in our own lives moving forward? I've got a suspicion that there were some people who were hearing this sermon of Hebrews for the first time, and they were starting to let Jesus slip by the wayside. And that's so easy for all of us to do as well. It doesn't have to be anything major. It doesn't have to be anything nefarious. We don't have to get called up in some huge sinful scandal. We can simply start to let Jesus slide on the scale of importance. Other things start to rank higher. Other priorities start to get in the way. We have other things that we want to commit to. And all of a sudden, we wake up one day, and Jesus is just one thing on our list. He's just one thing among many others. But did you know that Jesus was never meant to have any rivals in our lives? Now, you may be wondering about what Jesus did for you. He's some guy who lived a long time ago. I mean, what does he have to do with me now? What does somebody who lived over 2,000 years ago mean for my life today? Well, the preacher says here in Hebrews that Jesus cleansed us from our sins. That was the work of Jesus on the cross for our sins. Jesus died for our sins to bring us to the Father. He did this to reconcile us to God. He did this to cleanse us from our sins. He took our sin on his shoulders so that we could receive his life and be made whole. And that's why we believe that Jesus really is greater. That's why we believe that Jesus is greater than any other teacher, than any other religious leader, because Jesus came to do for us what we could never do for ourselves. He came to make us right with God. And that makes him majestic. That makes him worthy of worship. And devotion. He's greater than anyone or anything else in this world. Uh, the writer of Hebrews says here that Jesus is even greater than the angels. Uh, people weren't worshiping angels back then, but the angels did bring the law to Moses. And so when Hebrews says that he's even greater than the angels, it's saying that his commandment, his covenant, is even greater than the old covenant. And that means that salvation is now found in Christ. Salvation now belongs to Jesus alone. And for us, what that means is that Jesus is the ultimate. Jesus is the true Lord of our lives. We can't put anything higher than him. There can be no other idols in our lives. You know, it's easy to make other things more important in life. It's easy to make our grades the most important thing, or to make our college degree the most important thing, or our major We can make our jobs the most important thing in life. It's easy to make our families or politics or money or relationships or status or popularity, our image, even sports, make all those things the most popular thing in our lives. But the preacher of Hebrews here, he says to remember Jesus. To remember how Jesus truly is greater than all of that other stuff. And our lives were meant to revolve around Christ. So here's my challenge to the graduates today. Here's my challenge to the rest of us is is what can we do to keep making Jesus greater in our lives? As you go forward, what can you do to make Jesus greater in your life? Uh, One thing we can do, you're already doing it here this morning, is to make worship a priority in your life. Because church is important, y'all. As you get older, as you go off to school, uh, there's going to be nobody to make you go to church. Nobody's going to force you to go to worship. Church is not something that you can take or leave or just, just go when you feel like it. I want you to make it a priority in your life. I want it to be important to you. Because in worship, we refocus and we recommit our lives to Jesus. We celebrate his glory and all that he did for us. We gather around the good news of the gospel. And that's why weekly worship is so important. And there's a lot of things I hate about the coronavirus, but I hope that we don't let the coronavirus take worship away from us forever. 
because worship with one another helps us to get back on track with Jesus and his business for our lives. Coming to this place, coming to whatever church you go to, and willingly submitting our lives to God. That cannot be replaced in any other way. So I invite us to make weekly worship a priority in our lives. Let's get back into the habit of of meeting together, of worshiping together, and celebrating the glory of Jesus. Here's something else you guys can do. You can do a daily prayer. It's nothing fancy. You don't have to memorize this prayer. You can come up with one of your own. But before you even start your day, that means before you reach for your phone, do you guys reach for your phone first when you get up in the morning? That's what I do. It's the first thing I check is reach for my phone. But before you guys even do that, I want you to pray a prayer. I want you to pray a prayer that goes like this. Jesus, I belong to you today. My life is yours. My will is yours. I want to be your disciple today. It's not complicated. You can come up with with a prayer of your own that way. but, But if you start your day that way, if you start your day by committing your life to Jesus, then you'll have Jesus in the rightful place in your heart. And when we submit our lives to him the very first part of the day, then it's difficult to go then live our lives for ourselves and make our lives all about us. So I invite you to, to start with prayer as well. Finally, here's something that all of us can do, and you guys can do this as well. We can all begin to talk about our faith as we move forward. Now, I'm not talking about going up to a random stranger and, and talking about Jesus to somebody you don't know, but I'm talking about talking to somebody that you do know. Maybe talk to your best friend. Or talk to your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Talk to your roommate. Talk to a neighbor or a co-worker and tell them that your faith is important to you. Tell them that that you believe Jesus really is greater and that you're trying to live for him and all that you do. Because if you say those words to somebody else, that will help to keep you accountable. Somebody else can look at your life and say, hey, they don't really look like Jesus. Uh, The way they're living is not really what they said they were trying to live. So if you talk to somebody else about your faith, it can help you to keep on that right track because you believe that Jesus really is greater. You know, the temptation is to keep Jesus to ourselves, isn't it? You know, the world says that everybody can believe whatever you want to believe as long as you don't infringe on me. As long as you don't push your faith on me, we'll be okay. Well, y'all, we have the greatest news in the world, don't we? As Christians, don't we have the greatest Savior this world has ever known? We can't keep that to ourselves, can we? We can't be quiet about that. So share your faith. Share what God is up to in your life. And I believe that God can use you guys in a mighty way moving forward. Hawkinsville first and graduates today, Jesus is greater than anything else or anyone else in this world. And my goal in preaching is to always give you Jesus. And I hope that's what you've heard here today. May we all fall in love with Christ. May we all fall in love with the glory of God in Jesus. And may all of us enter into a living relationship with him. You need him. I need him. We all need him to get through this life. He's the king. He's the Lord. He's God's son come to save the world. And he deserves every bit of worship that we can possibly give him. May we give him the best that we have to offer. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. The gift of love, the gift of salvation, the gift of new life. We know that he really is greater than anyone else or anything else this world has to offer. And we want to follow him. We want to live for him. We want to be the people that you created us to be in Christ. Lord, give us courage to leave our old ways behind. Give us courage to leave behind our old sins. And give us courage to turn to follow you to turn towards a new path that we might be your disciples this day and always. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen. Our closing hymn is called I Stand Amazed in the Presence, and it's found on 371.
we'll sing the first, second, fourth, and fifth verses as we stand together. 371. guys we are so proud of you and God has good things in store for you moving forward and I want you to look around at the congregation turn around everybody look at the congregation these people they are rooting for you they love you they're going to support you you have a family around you that you can always call on for help as you move forward so Jesus is greater amen, amen. Jesus is greater than anything else or anyone else that this world has to offer may we live for him May we go and be the people that he wants us to be. May we live as disciples of Christ. Go now in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.